Amen. Wow, 63 people filled with the Holy Ghost today. That's a bad day for the devil and a great day for the kingdom of God. And we are so thankful. We give all the glory and the praise to Jesus for that. That's a God thing. Flesh cannot stir that up. Only God can do that. And we are so thankful for what he did today. And I am tru truly honored to be here. We are truly honored. We love you very much. And I think that we should do it every service. If you love the bishop, would you clap your hands and get loud and thank the Lord. If you have a preacher comes in and doesn't honor Brother Gurley, I, not that my opinion matters, but I wouldn't have him back. Amen. You're so blessed to the leadership that you have in this church. I know you know that, but I pray that you keep that in your mind. My family and I, we thank you for your hospitality to us. The book of 2 Timothy, chapter 1, verses 6 and 7. I started feeling this one last Sunday, and I felt it all week long, and so I've been waiting for tonight. 2 Timothy, chapter 1, verses 6 and 7. Praise the Lord. Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and and of love, and of a sound mind. I want to preach to you tonight on the faces of fear. The faces of fear. Lord Jesus, help her right now in Jesus' name. We need to pray for something going on back there. Let's pray right now. Jesus, keep your hand on the situation right now. Let your angels be in charge. In the name of the Lord Jesus, let your spirit Take over this atmosphere right now, God. Let angels be all over this building. I worship you for your power and for your glory. Heal right now, Lord. Stop any attack. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Thank you for what you're about to do in this place tonight. In Jesus' name. Let's clap our hands to the Lord in faith. Amen. You may be seated. Pastor... The large church a year or two ago asked me a question. He said, when the enemy attacks my church and my people, how come I can pick up on certain things, certain spirits that are attacking at times are very easy for me to see, and at other times there are things at work that I had no idea was working behind the scenes. How come I can see some spirits and I know what they're trying to do, and there's other things that seems like I'm blinded to what they're doing. And I said, well, in my experiences of traveling across America for the last 17 years, doing a lot of spiritual warfare, I can tell you that when a church is attacked by the enemy, there's usually two forms that the enemy comes in. I, I, I just say it like this. There's, there's bold spirits that are quite masculine that want you to know that they're attacking and there are other spirits that are not so bold, that are quite deceptive, that work behind the scenes. Some spirits are so uh, easy to pick up on. You do not need to be a prophet to know that this certain spirit is either in your house or in the building or in your family. There's rebellion, for instance. Every parent with a teenager knows what that spirit looks like, how that spirit acts. Anger, hatred racism, doubt. These are strong spirits. Homosexuality, strong spirits that are quite easy to notice when they enter the atmosphere. And there are other spirits that are not so, not so strong, but they are just as powerful. And they work behind the scenes. Pride, lying, cheating, Stealing things that work in people's lives, and, and yet you don't pick up on the fact that they're there in the atmosphere. Sometimes they're working together, but make no mistake about it, something is sent to attack every child of God and every church. Why are you saying all this? Because fear 
is a spirit. And fear is so unique that it can attack in a bold way where you know it and everyone around you knows it. And it also can attack in a deceptive way where no one has any idea that fear is the motive behind the action being taken by the person. And I feel in the Holy Ghost and God has anointed me to preach this across America and deliver people and congregations from the spirit of fear. And tonight we will see a great deliverance in this building. I know it's just a few in the proud tonight in here, but we need to understand that hell would love to do anything to silence this church in this area because of the power and the influence that you have. Whether it's through spirits or through haters, people would love to do anything to keep this church quiet. I'm feeling good tonight. And so fear works in different ways and i just when i when i was when the lord gave me this i was in a church service in west palm beach florida a few months ago seven or eight months ago maybe 10 months ago and during the service he began to tell me these things he said there are faces to fear and he said the first face of fear that i want you to address nationally is the face of taunting fear and I said okay and I wrote it down I said give me some kind of example and he he showed me Goliath as the face of taunting fear and taunting fear is something that comes at people in a mocking form very strong in fact the number one attribute of taunting fear is isolation Goliath never said send me two men to fight me send me three men send me eight men but he said send me a man because fear always wants to isolate you from others that are around you now you can stare at me but i'm in the holy ghost right now people come to the house of god act like everything is fine in their life patty cake for jesus and can't turn their light off at night because they're scared something will come in their bedroom And isolation is a tactic of fear. You can be surrounded by the church, surrounded by people that love you, but fear can make you feel so alone. You know how I've noticed something about fear? It can get into someone's life through a family member, through a relationship. There are people that never dealt with fear until they got connected to someone that was bound by fear. And when David showed up on the battlefield, his big, bad, older, tough brothers were arrested by fear. And they said, because we're afraid, you need to be afraid. I've never known anyone bound by fear that didn't want others bound by fear. I can give you just an example of today. There are certain people I can call about what happened this morning and say 63 people received the Holy Ghost and they'll be excited. They'll rejoice with me. And there are others that if I call them, they'll say, now be careful. Don't want to upset the enemy. Don't want people to hear about this and think it didn't really happen. You know what that is? It's fear. It's fear of standing out. It's fear of being recognized. It's fear of human spirits. And fear comes to people in such a way that isolates them. And Goliath is looking down on David and saying, you cannot defeat me. You cannot take me out. You cannot destroy me. I am greater than you. I am stronger than you. And David's brothers are trying to convince him of the same thing because they're bound by fear also. Fear starts taunting David. And David looks back at a giant and says, you come to me with a spear and with a shield and with a sword. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. He said, you come with and I come 
in. That's the first thing you understand. The first thing you have to know how to defeat the spirit of fear. You must learn to talk back to the enemy. The enemy loves it when you're silent, when they threaten you, when they accuse you, and when they taunt you. The enemy assumes, I want you to hear this, that if you are silent when they are taunting you, that you are in agreement with what they are saying. So they keep taunting and they keep mocking and sooner or later you have to make a decision either I agree with the enemy and I'm never going to be free or I'm going to open up my mouth and say no matter what you say to me I believe that God will get the final say Goliath said you come to me with staves which is to say a stick and Goliath saw the stick and Goliath was right because he thought you're coming to a spear fight with a stick you're going to die but what Goliath could not see was a bag of rocks tied to David's waist and Goliath assumed David would fight with something that he always walked with but he could not see the hidden weapons David was bringing with him and that's what drives hell crazy about people in this building you don't look like you should be able to walk in victory at times but every time you face a giant somehow when the battle is over something from within you comes out and you somehow win the war every time now if you've never faced a giant an enemy you know you have no idea what i'm preaching about right now but there are some people in this building that should not be here because hell came and tried to crush them but somehow they stood through it and they made their way out of it and won the battle So, to defeat taunting fear, you have to talk back to it. Respect your brothers, David. Respect your elders. Respect the king, David. But don't you dare be silent when an enemy is telling you you can't have victory. It's one thing if someone in the church says, you're never going to be free. You just be respectful and, and they have their own opinion. But when you're driving in the car and the devil's whispering in your head that you're not going to be free, don't you dare sit there silently and hope that voice leaves. You might look foolish, but who cares what you look like? If a spirit can arrest you, it'll do it every day of your life. Look back at that devil and say, I will have victory when this is over. I I will survive this battle. And so it comes in a bold way, and then it comes a different way, a deceptive way. Tormenting fear is the next face the Lord showed me. There's taunting fear that mocks you, and then there's tormenting fear that haunts you. And this is the face of Delilah. Delilah in the Hebrew. So similar to Delia in the Greek, which is spirit of fear. And when hell could not take big bad Samson out with soldiers, lions, weapons, everything they tried. They hired a little chick with a big mouth. (laughs) Y'all want to be quiet? I'll get real with you. (laughs) They hired, in fact, the word Delilah, the name Delilah means feeble. They hired a feeble person that knew how to talk to mighty men of God. And we laugh. (laughs) But there are feeble voices talking to people in here. And if you could see the size of the devil talking to you, you wouldn't be afraid. (laughs) 
Like Jeff Arnold used to say, if 6,000 devils were inside the man known as Legion, just how small is a devil? And they're talking, and she is hired by hell to torment him. In fact, she begins to, to vex him and to stress him out and to weigh heavy on his spirit. He's winning victories and then stressed out because she's trying to find the secret. Tormenting fear. What's the secret of your past? What does no one know about that if I find out, I can destroy you with? Tormenting fear. I'm going to expose you. I'm going to destroy you. I'm going to remove the anointing from you. I'm going to take everything God did for you and pull it away from you somehow. Come on, Samson. There's no way you're that powerful. There must be a secret that no one knows about. And daily, she began to vex him until the word said she vexed him to the point of death which means he was suicidal in the hebrew winning victories and suicidal anointed by god and suicidal how does that even make sense being used of god mightily and so stressed out by the mouth of hell and she's coming at him in a such a way that he is trying to resist her and now i told you taunting fear wants isolation from you tormenting fear wants relaxation from you what does that mean that you learn to live with the torment oh this is good <laughs> where you learn to relax with the demon Where you go to church on Sunday night and you know God's a deliverer and you expect it for everyone else but not yourself. Because you've lived so long with a voice reminding you of something. Oh, I'm losing all my shouters now. Where are these? You can act all holy all you want to, but I know there are people in here that hell loves to just talk. I wish you'd get real with God right now and not act Pentecostal and act real and say, Lord, I am sick of the enemy talking in my head. Yeah, well, come on, let's stir it up right now. Stir up that gift that's in you, right? Stop being silent with your adversary. Stop letting the devil just say what he wants to say to you. She gets him to start relaxing in torment. She is stressing him out, but he can't seem to get away from the voice. Until finally, and you know the story better than I do, he says, okay, just cut my hair. And I'll be weak like any other man. And then he is so used to relaxing with the devil that he relaxes one more time knowing hell is about to cut him off from everything God's using him in but he just can't stop relaxing there's a difference in rest and relaxation and we all need R&R &R, but be careful if you're relaxing near something carnal all the time if you relax more than you rest, rest is spiritual. And if you rest, you can get near God. But if you're always relaxing, demons are attracted to things that don't move and don't respond and don't change. And Samson's relaxing and she's hired by hell and in the other bedroom. Oh, I wish I could preach it like I used to. It never, you got to be careful when you're on a date with Delilah because there's other things behind the wall that you can't see, Samson. There's soldiers in the other room that you don't know are there and Samson finally relaxes to a place where he falls asleep in her lap and starts to close his own vision and when you close your own vision it will not be long before hell removes your vision and they come in and they cut his hair and they cut out his eyes and he's weak like any other man and it says in the Bible that she began to vex him when the Hebrew means she began to scream at him you failure.
You're pathetic. You thought I loved you. It's over for you. God is done with you. And she screamed at him, and he couldn't see. He could only hear the voice of torment. And two years, according to historians, Bishop, you probably know more than I do, but from what I've read, two years, he walked around in a circle, in a, in a pit, pushing a limestone mill around two years. And you can't tell this preacher he didn't hear the voice of Delilah every single day. You were so mighty. You were so used. You were so powerful. And look at you now. You're blind. You can't see your way out. God's through. If God wasn't through, why wouldn't he show up by now? If God was going to use you again, it's been two years. Don't you think he would have called by now? And he's walking around in circles. And tormenting fear can be so strong. And yet you can walk blindly in it and feel like it's never good going to go away but hell made a mistake (laughs) see demons I know one thing about them they they only know one speed and that's all out (laughs) they never stop they just go all out with what they're allowed to do and so they thought well let's just bring him out since we're tormenting him uh, in isolation let's bring him out and mock him and the Bible said to make sport of him which means to throw objects at him and so they brought him out to make sport of him and to throw objects at him he's blind he's tormented but there's a kid nearby that's got some vision oh Samson's hair was growing again, but he couldn't see. Now watch this. He's got the power, but he has no vision. The kid has the vision, but he has no power. But if you ever mix the elder's power with the youth vision. That's cute, but I'm saying something deeper than you think. When Jesus took out the city and the Bible said the entire city was shaken, he did it with a donkey and a colt, an elder and a younger generation carry him in to the city. And if you ever get some elders that will get on fire and some kids that have some vision for revival, you will see things fall. But if the elders are saying these kids are backslidden, they don't know what they're doing, and the kids are saying the elders are disconnected, then you've got division. You need El Shakata. You need the elders and the kids to say we're together. Let's have revival. And he said, take me to the pillars. And he found the pillars. He could feel, but he couldn't see. Here's how you defeat tormenting fear. He starts praying like he's never prayed. You can't go through the motions and defeat tormenting fear. You can't do it with your daily devotion. I love, and I'm all about daily devotion. Trust me if you know me. But you cannot defeat spirits that are tormenting you just trying to get your hour of prayer in during the day. You have to get serious. And he said, God, if you will give me strength just this one time, In other words, he said, God, I can't see my way out. And I feel the objects hitting me. And I hear the words. And several historians say, Delilah was up on the roof. You'll see a theme with this in a moment. Fear always looks down on you to make you feel inferior. And here he is. And as he's waiting, he starts praying. And then he starts pushing. He looks so foolish pushing up against pillars that are just blocks. No man can move these. But there's a faith inside of Samson that's so desperate for the torment to stop that he says, I'm going to push against things that nobody in their right mind would ever push against. And somehow, some way, someone needs to hear this preacher. If you want victory, you've got to pray a 
until something breaks and you've got to push against the things that no one else will push against. I gotta hurry. Third face of fear is a mixture of the two. It can be bold and it can be deceptive. It's the face of Jezebel. Oh, yeah. Jezebel could be bold and run over weak people, and then she could be deceptive and try to stir up strong people. If you were weak, she would take your vineyard and have you executed in front of everyone. But if you were a prophet, she would threaten you. This is the third face of fear, threatening fear. Threatening fear uses intimidation. Taunting fear uses isolation. Tormenting fear, relaxation. But threatening fear releases is intimidation and then all of a sudden the person is afraid of anything any kind of conflict any kind of confrontation any kind of adversary and threatening fear talks in such a way that only you can understand it if you're mighty she can't even touch you Elijah but she'll write you a letter and she knows you'll believe the words of the letter. And so you'll enter a dimension of fear where you run miles and miles into a desert asking God to let you die. This is the prophet that calls down fire and rain and he's saying, God, let me die. This voice is too strong. And she is evil the jezebel and i don't want to get into there's so many things i can deal with with the spirit of jezebel but uh, for tonight's message i want to show you the fear aspect of it she is coming at elijah in such a way that he runs away from her and god has to call him on a 40 day fast you know why because god was going to use him to go back and confront what chased him that's the power of fasting by the way before the fast pre-fast she chased him but post fast he comes back and says i see a wall i see you falling off the wall and i see dogs eating you And here's how you defeat threatening fear. You start fasting like nobody around you. You get consecrated and you say, God, I'm going to go hide myself along with you until I've got the confidence. You know why some of you have no confidence against that voice? Because you're fighting it in your flesh. And your flesh is no match for a demonic spirit. If that was true, if your human spirit could handle a demonic spirit, no one in the world would ever be possessed. But that's why the Holy Spirit is so necessary to the human spirit because when the demonic spirit attacks the human spirit the holy spirit can override when the enemy comes in like a flood the spirit of the lord will raise up a standard against him here comes jehu and guess how the, just like Delilah, just like uh, Goliath, Jezebel goes up to the window and she starts looking down on in the oncoming new king and she starts talking to him. Had Zimri peace who slew his master that she was telling him a real story of a servant who killed a king, became king, and then was killed himself. And he had just killed, Jehu had just killed Jezebel's kid. And she said, you think you're going to get away with that victory? You think Jezebel always shows up when you get power or position. That's when it shows up. And she shows up and he's riding in victory. And she's, she, what she's saying to him is this. You won't keep what God just did for you. Oh, I wish I could preach to people that feel that all the time. And he looks back. This is how you defeat this one. Watch this. He looks back at her and says, who is on my side? Well, oh, this is something no one's going to want to shout about. But some spirits, some enemies only go down when you don't try to do it alone and you get help in the fight. Oh, that's quiet right there. 
See, I, no, you know why you don't want it? Because you don't want anyone to know that you deal with fear. And so we try to act. I've got this. I've got this. It's been there 12 years. You don't have this. You need someone that has power that's with you that says you can trust me. I'll pray with you right now. You need this church. If you're watching online, you go here. I want you to hear this. You need to be in the building with the people that love you. Stop trying to fight the enemy at your house by yourself. You can't fight the enemy. Disconnect it from the ones that are with you. You need people with you. And they said, we're on her side, your side. And they threw her down. And just like the old preacher's prophecy, they, she landed and the dogs ate Jezebel. You defeat threatening fear by being accountable. Fourth face of fear, I'm almost done. The worst fear of all. Terrorizing fear. Death. The Bible says there is a fear unto death. Ever heard the term scared to? Why? Because that's the ultimate fear. Death is the ultimate fear. And paralyzation is what happens when someone thinks they're going to die. Get a bad report, you're going to die. Feel something not right, this is what it is. You're going to die. Not just physical, spiritual death can happen. Starting to slip, you're not going to make it. You're going to, walk, you're going to lose out with God. You're going to backslide. You're not strong enough to fight this one. You're going to lose it all. Death starts talking and can arrest a person to such a degree that even though they may used to shout, run, have faith that moves mountains, they now sit and they stare and they don't move. And they can blame everybody around them, but the truth is they're under an attack of the enemy and it's killing their faith. The only problem with that is Hebrews said that Jesus destroyed the one who had power over death. I want you to hear something. Jesus destroyed the one, the devil, who had power over death. If I die tonight, the devil did not kill me as a child of God. If I pass away, God took me home. Some of you don't even hear, you're not even... The devil can tell you all day long he's going to kill you. He cannot touch you unless God authorizes death to come near you because God has the keys to death, hell, and the grave. Stand to your feet. And the Lord told me those four faces. And I went to the pulpit and I, I wrote down what I could and I preached the best that I could and I, at the end I said okay we're going to come forward and we're going to pray against the spirit of fear for you to be delivered and everyone came forward Bishop and right before I prayed the prayer of faith God stopped me as sure as I'm standing here and said stop there's one more face and I turned and I said Lord what's the face he said James 2 19, trembling fear. He said, this is a face of fear that demons can't make it you, but you can make it them. Oh, it's about to get fun. The verse says, thou believest that there is one God. Thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. 
He said, when fear comes to taunt you or torment you or threaten you or terrify you, you can do something back that will make that spirit tremble. Some of you still don't get it, so let me preach to you. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. There's only one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. One God and Father of all, who is above all, through all, and in you all. And he said... When you start to vocally declare that I am a believer in the one true God and his name is Jesus. I believe there's only one God and his name is Jesus. I believe there's only one God and his name is Jesus. What you do in the atmosphere is you cause the thing threatening you. Now you may not be shouting, but every devil that came in here with you is trembling right now because when you mention there's only one God. Some of you are under arrest right now. You need to open up your mouth and start saying it with me. I believe there's only one God and his name is Jesus. Say it till you mean it. I believe there's only one God. Spirit world shaking right now. Spirit world shaking right now. Spirit world stirring up right now. When you start to declare there's only one God in my body, only one God over my marriage, only one God over my kid, only one God over my future. I want you to be honest right now. If fear has been hovering near you, come stand up here right now. I don't care what what channel it's used. I want you to come stand up here. No one needs to know exactly what it's saying. I don't care. But just be real. On the platform, in the audience, I don't care. And watch. Watch. Remember, silence in the demonic world means you're submitting to what we're saying. Relaxation in the demonic world is saying, I'm never going to be delivered. Intimidation is saying to hell, I can't beat you on my own. And when you come to face an enemy that's within and has somehow gotten access to your brain and the thoughts and the words it's saying now control your tone, your facial expressions, your reactions, your smile, you no longer laugh. Well, I'm in the, I feel something strategic right now. Trying to live for God, tormented. Trying to live for God, being torn, tormented by a devil, taunted by a devil, threatened every other day. And trying to hold it all together for everyone else to think everything's just fine. That is not a formula for victory the victory comes when you say I don't care who is in the building I don't care what people think about me I could care less if you're impressed or unimpressed I could care less if you think less of me I've got a war that I need a victory in right now remember I remember this deaf girl that came to a service one night high school kid suicidal never been to a church service in her life I remember they I was preaching on giving for of all things and she walked up to the altar and put like three dollars down and 
broken home, terrible life, was going to kill herself. Went home that night, went, came back to church the next night. Middle of the service, I just felt the Lord say, God's going to, I'm going to heal her. So I just prayed and had some ladies pray. And they started praying and boom, her ears popped wide open. And, and she started running around and crying and speaking in tongues. And God filled her with the Holy Ghost. And, and she was so excited, called her mom. And her mom screamed at her. Said, get away from that church. You're never, even though she's hearing her mother speak. The first words she heard from her mother were rebuke and attack. And she went home that night. And she woke up the next morning. She could still hear. But she was covered from head to toe in like boils. They sent me a picture of her face. I didn't know who it was. They rushed her to the, watch this, they rushed her to the emergency. They were going to quarantine her. They said, until we know what this is, we've got we've to get everybody away from her. The pastor called me, the pastor's son too. He said, what do we do? What is this? I said, you're not going to believe what this is. You're not going to believe it. But this is what it is. Some people that are deaf, it's physical. But some it's spiritual. Because Jesus said, come out thou dumb and deaf spirit and I said this one was a spirit and I said watch this I said she's not been baptized in Jesus name has she they said no I said so she's not covered by the blood they said no I said what was in her body is now attacking her outside her body they said what I said get her in the water and get the name of Jesus to cover her and tell me she's the same when she comes out. Some of you have no idea what this is. This is spiritual warfare right here. When they started telling her about the one God and Jesus named baptism, the boils started disappearing. They took her to the water, put her down in Jesus name. When she came out, she was completely whole. Because spirits fear the name that's above every other name and at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow and that's why when you start shouting the name of Jesus angels move in demons back off because the name of Jesus causes hell to tremble and is there anybody that knows that name 